Well, this is recognized as a UE helico helicopter, was the workhorse of the Vietnam War. Everything was brought in because of the jungle situations. Uh, we didn't have roads or anything, so all our ammunition, supplies, water, things like that, uh, came in on this UE. And also, unfortunately, the dead and the wounded were also removed on the UE. Uh, again, I'm saying this is the workhorse. Uh, as for this particular float, uh, it was a mastermind of uh, Harry Titus, and he's walking in front of the helicopter today. Harry started this out uh, on his own and some of his people that worked for him. And when I got involved, it was nothing but a, a plywood frame, the nose. Uh, I guess it's taken probably at least four to five months from the start to complete. Uh, 50 people at least probably put time into it. Uh, one particular person is Jack Flagg, who probably has over a thousand hours into this every single day since they started it. And again, the mastermind of all this was uh, Harry Titus, and he just kept with it, kept with it, kept with it until what you see here today. Even today when I hear it, I stop, catch my breath, and think back to those days. I love you guys as only an infantryman can. No matter how bad things were, if we called, you came. Down through the green tracers and other visible signs of a real bad day, off to a real bad start. To us, you seemed beyond brave and fearless, that you would come to us in the middle of battle, in those flimsy, thin-skinned crates, and in the storm of fire, you would sit up there behind that thin plexiglass, seeming so patient, and so calm and so vulnerable, waiting for the offloading and the onloading. We thought you were God's own lunatics and we loved you, still do. We're the fortunate ones. We survived when so many better men gave up their precious lives for us. We owe them a sacred debt to live each day to its fullest. What they're saying when you listen hard enough is this. We are at peace, and so should you be, and so should you be.